Hey everyone, it's TK Friday. Today we're working with the TK7 Go panel and we're working with black and white. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're going to take this image, do a simple black and white conversion, and then we're going to pull out the TK7 Go panel and the TK7 Combo panel. And then we're going to really transform it into, I think, a very beautiful black and white image. By the way, if you don't own the TK7 panel yet, or if you want to get some training videos, uh, you can go down to my affiliate link. You'll find it in the description below this video. Click on that link, and then it'll take you to the TK page where you can purchase uh, the panels and videos. And if you use my promo code, DK15, you can save an additional 15% off anything you purchase on that TK page. Well, let's get started. Let's convert this to black and white. I'm going to come to this icon on the TK7 combo panel, click it, and we can find our black and white adjustment layer right here. We can click right here, or you could come down here and find the black and white adjustment layer as well. But let's go ahead and do a simple black and white conversion. So I'm going to work with the reds first. Now what I'm watching for is see up in here, this light area, I don't want to blow this out. So I got to be careful with that. So I'm going to take it right around there. Now let's work with the yellows. Yeah, I can bring the yellows up. Now if I go too far, I'm going to blow that out as well. So I got to watch that. So be careful with that kind of stuff. So maybe right around that area, right there. I think that'll work. Now let's play with the greens. I think I want to darken the greens. Because if you lighten the greens, it's going to draw too much interest to those greens. So that's why I'm thinking I'm going to darken them down a little bit. I want to leave some texture back in there, but they are out of focus. I think it's some ivy, but I'm going to darken them a little bit and draw attention to our beautiful horse and model here. They're beautiful. So I think right there looks good. And I don't think there's any cyan in here or blue, not really, and magenta. So right there, I think that's good. So let's see. Here is our before. And here is our after, and I think it looks really good. I think we're off to a good start. Now we're going to really work on this image, working with the TK7 Go panel. So if you're ever wondering how to start in an image, just kind of look it over and, and look for something that really sticks out that really you feel needs change. Like for me, when I look at this image, I think the model's face, I really want to light it up a bit. So I think I'm going to work with that first. So I'm going to come up and grab a zone mask. So I'm going to click on this zone mask icon here and click right in this area right in here. And that'll pick that zone. Let's click OK. And I think everything is good there. What I'm going to do is dodge through a selection. So what we'll do is come here and we'll click on the left side of this dodge icon and i use that side because it gives me a 50 percent gray layer and i can see what i'm doing and it sets you up with white paint and so i'm going to get a nice soft brush here and i'm going to paint it around at 20 percent. let's try 20 percent and just paint on our model's face and just kind of lighten it up even down on the neck area down in here even right up into here and even over here. Let's just lighten all this up. Let me do a Command-Z or Control-Z. I didn't want to hit that there again, but I think that's pretty good. Uh, let me go to 10% now and just paint over it one more time, right in here and here. This area looks good, but okay, that's 10%, so let me give it another 10%. I just want to build it up slowly. Okay. So let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after. See, it just lightens her up a little bit and it's drawing some attention to her. The next thing I'm noticing is the back of the horse here is a little bit light. It's drawn my eye too much and right up on the horse on the upper part of the head on the left side, it's a little bit too light. So I'm going to tone these areas down. So I'm going to get another zone mask and I'm going to click this light area back in here and click OK and see how that, tar yeah, see that's targeting nice around her face and see how this is light up in here. So I think that's going to be good. This time I'm going to do a burn on a 50% gray layer. So click on the left side of this burn icon and uh, my brush is at 10%. I'm going to start at 10% and see what that looks like. I don't want it to go too dark, but just a little bit. I'm going to hit this one more time. Just right around there, okay, and maybe there, and then on up here on the horse. And again, this is kind of like that light sculpting thing, but we can just tone these areas down and just kind of 
work on this image and make it sing. This is what it's all about. We're creating, in my, in my opinion, when you're doing black and white, you are creating a nice artistic piece. So I think right there. So let's take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. So I think it's toning those areas down really well. I may hit this one more time back in here. And so here's a before and here's an after. Now I continue to really look at the image and the next thing I see where I have a problem area is this ivy back here. I still think it's a little too light so I want to darken it down a little bit. I'm going to work with zones again so let's grab another zone mask and I'm going to sample this lighter area back in here so I can tone it down a bit. Let's click OK and it's targeting that area really well. So I'm just going to leave it just the way it is and go ahead and put it on a burn 50% burn gray layer. This time I'm going to bump my opacity up. I'm going to start out at 30%. Let me see what that does. I'm going to stay away from this light area because I like it. Okay, so I'm going to do that. 30%, darken it up a bit. I can even come down in here. Okay, and let me hit this side. Just tone it down because I want to keep our attention away from it. I'm going to hit it a couple. Every time I lift my brush, by the way, and paint again, I'm putting another 30% down. So I'm like lifting it every time you see me like here. I lift it. Now I paint. Okay. Let me come over here a couple more times and just darken this a little bit. Like so. I think that's good. So let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after. Now, if you option click this layer, we're painting through a selection. So let's option click it. And you can see how it's nicely targeting everything through that zone mask, okay? It's really nice. And again, here's the before and here's the after. So see how every now we're being drawn right into the horse and the model, which is really what we want. I'm continuing to study the image. And the next thing I think is I want this area back here a little light lighter. Because to me, this is like an ethereal glow and it really adds to the overall image. So I just want to lighten that a little bit. So I'll use another zone mask and let's just sample some of this lighter area back in here maybe right around that tone there click ok and i'm just going to go with that and again let's put that on a dodge layer 50 percent gray and by the way uh, the dodge layers are in an overlay blend mode and the burn layers are in a soft light blend mode and just in case you're wondering and uh let's see i'm going to go with 10 percent because i want to build this up slowly and if, so, if some of that gets onto the hair, that's okay. Because it, it can go slightly light, lighter. So just right in here, I just want to build up that ethereal glow just a little bit. Let's see, here is the before and here is the after. Before and after. So I like it. And don't forget, you always have this opacity adjustment. You can pull it back if it's too strong. Now I'm looking at this beautiful flowing dress here. And it's really pretty, but I'd like to bring it up in uh, lightness a little bit. I like to bring up that lighter tones a little bit. So let me go ahead and grab another zone mask. And I'll probably be pretty much using zone mask for all of this. And let's click on some of the lighter areas. Like right here, I'm going to click right here. Click OK and see what that targets. Okay, that's targeting it really well. Let me just maybe narrow that mask down a little bit, like like maybe there. So I stay away from some of the shadow areas. So I'll tone it down a little bit. I like that right there. I think that is good. And let's go ahead and put that on a Dodge 50% gray layer. And right now I'm at 10%. Let me start out at 10% and just we can just paint over this whole area in here. Okay. 10%, bring it up. This is real pretty back here. And let's just go ahead and paint in here liberally right in here. So that's 10%. Let's give it another 10%. Paint around. I can make my brush a little bit larger. Paint down in here. I'm going to stay off of here because it's already light. I just threw another 10% on there. Let's take a look. Here is the before. And here's after, but isn't it nice? It's starting to glow a little bit, getting a little lighter, really ethereal and dreamy. And let me hit it another time. Now I am going slow, but I really recommend that builds it up. I lifted my brush. I'm using a Wacom tablet and pen right here. So when I say brush, that's what I mean. You could use a mouse as well. I'm going to hit this one more time up in this area, right there. 
So let's take a look here. Here's the before and here's the after. And I think I'll make my brush a little bit smaller and just come around here a couple times on this strap. Okay, just like so. And let's see, here is a before and here's an after. And while I'm here, I think I want to lighten just the front of the horse's head here a little bit because he is a big part of this image here so just a little bit of lightning right there okay so let's take a look see if i went too far here's a before and here's an after and by the way if you felt you went too far you can always go with a gray brush and i'm at 10 percent. so if i went too far up here i can just paint over this with a gray brush through that same selection and that just erases it because it's at 50% gray. So I love the gray brush. It's really an aid to you when you're using uh, the dodge and burn tools on a 50% gray layer. So here is the before and here's the after. So beautiful so far. I love it. Let's see where we've come from so far. I'm just going to shut these layers off. So we started here with the black and white uh, conversion. And now we look like this. So I'm loving it. See how we're focusing all the tension on the model and the horse. I like it. Now what's next? I want to just maybe darken down some of the shadows a little bit just to bring a little bit of extra texture. Not much, but a little bit. So let's get another zone mask and let's go with some of the darker shadows. Maybe right here. Click OK. And this time I think I will narrow the range again a little bit. And that's too much. I'm losing some of the shadows there. See, the light areas are going to get darker. Okay. So I don't... I don't think I do want to narrow it. I think that's going to be good right there. Let's leave it there. And we're going to go, th we're going to burn through 50% gray. But I think I'll bump uh, my opacity up to, let's try 30%. I'll make my brush a little smaller and just paint on some of these shadow areas. Okay. This may have been too, too strong. So I'm going to do a Commander Control Z and just come back. I'm, I'm going to go down to 10%, I think. Hit that. Okay. I better be on the safe side. Now I'm just lifting my brush each time you see me paint here and give it another 10%. Okay. And maybe down on some of this, these areas down in here, just to bring out a little bit of texture in here. And I'm just looking for the darker areas. Now remember, I have a zone mask that is really protecting the light areas. So only the dark areas that I go over will get darker. And I'm only using that 10%. Let's take a look. Here's a before... And here's an after. So you can see that little texture coming out in here. Let's just keep going a few more times in here. And I'll tell you, this 10%, I know I have to paint it a bunch of times, but I'd rather have better uh, accuracy than over going overboard and then, you know, getting mad at myself and saying, man, you screwed up. You got to start all over again. Let me get back in here a little bit. Okay. So let's see. Here is the before. And here's the after. Now, if we option click here, we can see how we're targeting that. Isn't that cool? So before and after. Next, I think I want to bring out some of the highlights in the hair and maybe on the horse's tail. And to do that, another zone mask. And let's sample some of the lighter values in the hair, maybe around this value right here. Click OK. Let's see how well that targets. Yeah, it's pretty good. I may narrow this range in just a little wee bit, something like that. And let's go ahead and get a dodge layer. And right now I'm at 50%, so I don't want to be at 50%. Let's try 20% and see what we get here. So again, I'm just looking for highlights. Okay, just like so. Highlights, just to you know, add a little texture here. And I don't know. I just think it's going to look really pretty to have some nice glow on these highlights. back in here just paint around some of these wisps of hair how about in here yeah a little bit and every time I lift my brush remember I'm putting down another 20% and I think it helps to go slow back in here a little bit but be careful don't overdo it take your time enjoy this it's all about crafting your image and this should be fun if it's not fun, hey, what good is it, right? Okay. I'm just getting a little artistic in here and just drawing my own little design in here. Okay. Okay. 
I like that. Let's see. Here's a before. And now here's the after. Now let's bring up some highlights in the horse's tail. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint in these highlights and add a little bit of texture here. I think it's going to be really nice and I like it. Here's the before and here's the after. I like that. And I may tone this down a little bit in here. So I'm going to get a gray brush at about 10% and I'm just going to make my brush a little bit larger and just tone some of that area down that I got in there. Just a little wee bit. I went a little too strong. Here's a before and here's an after. So before and after. And let me see, just a couple little spots here. They're just a little bit too hot. That gray brush is your friend. It'll really help you out. So here's our before and here's our after. Think of the gray brush as your eraser tool. The next thing I want to do is add a little spotlight on our model's face and a little bit on the horse here. So what I'm going to do is get a lasso tool. I'm just typing L for the lasso tool. Draw a selection around the face here. Just like that. I'm going to hold my shift key down and draw another lasso tool around here. Maybe intersect these guys right like so. And now we're going to come to our TK actions and grab a spotlight. We're going to accept the radius just the way it is. Click OK. And now we have the spotlight. Here's the before and here's the after. But see that nice little spotlight we've added on our model and horse? It's really nice. Now, if that's too strong, we can take this opacity and ease it back a little wee bit. That's 24%. Here's the before and here's the after. But just adding a nice little spotlight just to draw more attention to the face area. And I like it. And if I want to take some off up in here, just click on the mask, get yourself a black brush, and I'm going to make my brush larger. I'm at, uh, let's go to 20% opacity, and I'm just going to paint off right there. Take off some of that lightness right there. Okay, so here is the before, and here is the after. I like it. The last thing I want to do is draw a vignette around the edges here. I'm going to do a freehand vignette and use the TK action to do it. Now, normally when you draw a vignette, I'll show you how it works. I'm going to have an issue and I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So normally you do this and you would click your action and you say freehand vignette. I always accept the radius the way it is and click OK and it puts a vignette around the edge, right? But I want to keep it off of the glow up here. It doesn't actually look too bad, but I want to keep it off that glow. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to delete this and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a vignette around here. I want to stay away from that ethereal glow just around the edge like so and off the horse up here and just come around like this. And so that's the area it's selected. Now I'm going to come to my TK action, do a freehand vignette. But I get the Gaussian blur up and I'm going to accept the radius. But notice the vignette is wrong. It's uh, darkening the inside of my image instead of the outside. So all you have to do here is click and do a command or control I and invert that and you're good to go. Now that's at 50%, which I think is too strong. Here's the before and here's the after. And now let me just take this opacity and bring it back a good bit. I just want a tiny little bit, little bit of a vignette. That's 15%. Here's the before and here's the after. So just a very slight vignette, maybe just a little bit more. Let's take it up there. There's 23% before and after. I like it. I think that vignette really helps just to finish off this image. Now you may want to continue working on this image and do some other things, but... I think this tutorial was long enough, but you get the idea. So we've come from here, which is our black and white conversion, and now we end up with this. And I think it really worked out nice, and we just used zone masks the whole way. So black and white photography and the TK7GO panel are a match made in heaven, in my opinion.